Oh, you think you're smart, huh? Because you can distinguish between single and two-handed swords? I pity the fool who thinks it's that simple. Oh, you thought I was talking about hand and a half swords? <laughs> That'd be too easy. I mean, we can talk about hand and a half swords if you want, but let's go to the weirder case first. What if I told you that this was a single-handed sword, regardless of how long the handle is? And this. And this. No, I'm just messing with you. Or am I? Yes, I am. I am shitting you. Okay, let's pump the brakes for a second. Obviously, a hand and a half sword is not called that because it's designed for injured veterans. It's called that, or rather, nowadays we call it that, they didn't back in history, because you can either use it with one hand or with two. Or can you? There are some swords that we might label such that have an awfully short handle that depending on your hand size, you might not even really be able to cram in both hands. The Albion Cressy is one of those examples. Looks like a hand and a half, and I generally like to cut with both hands for the extra control, but it's not easy. The Gallo Glass is in a similar category, but the handle is just a little bit longer, so I can grip it with both hands in a handshake grip. The Cressy barely allows for that. To make matters even more confusing, there are also rare cases where a single-handed sword with short handle is shown as being swung with both hands. I have to wonder if some of the swords we call hand and a half were really designed just for single-handed use. What would be the point to that, you might ask? Hang on there. Listen to me very carefully. I'll get to that. Let me just exercise your attention span for a little bit. Think of it like mental stretching. I know it's uncomfortable, but hold the position just a little bit longer. Feel that stretch in your brain. Why bother with this hand and a half business so you have a hand free to use a shield? And if your shield gets destroyed, you can now double fist your sword for really powerful sweat. Uh, actually, good old Fiore has no problem with using the sword in one hand, even without a shield. Okay, let's mess around with another kind of sword, or knife. The messer very often has an oversized handle. Not always, and this is relatively short. Not really long enough to put two hands on it. You can literally put half a hand on the end and then the other two fingers hang there, which technically still gives you more control than just one hand. But there are also examples with handles more than long enough for two hands. Quite comfortably, in fact. This is pretty much katana length right there. So you'd think this is designed as a hand and a half sword or even straight up two-handed sword. No, apparently not. Going by the sources, these are always shown as being used with one hand. So why is that? First, let's take a moment to think about pommels. I remember about 10 years ago on YouTube, give or take, it was fashionable to debunk the claim that the pommel is there for balance. It acts as a counterweight. And I feel like the debunking might have gone a tad too far. No, a pommel is not the primary means of balancing a sword. You generally do quite a bit more with tapering, whether it be a distal taper, where you gradually reduce the thickness of the blade, or profile taper where you reduce the width. Now, obviously the length also matters. If you keep the blade the same width but shorten it, you move the point of balance further back and vice versa if you make it longer. To think that adding extra metal to the hilt would make no significant difference whatsoever would be a little misguided. Uh, sure, there are hollow pommels, but not every pommel was hollow. Sometimes you do see separate pommels listed on a museum website with the weight given. What I'm seeing there is, yes, it can be as low as, say, 90 grams or about 100, but it can also be two to 300. If the entire sword weighs, say, 1,000 grams or 1,200, then two or 300 grams makes a difference. What if, instead of attaching a pommel, we make the tang wider and longer? What if you want a strong cutting blade? So you don't want to give it a significant profile taper and you want to keep the distal taper fairly modest too, but you want it to be agile. How about you make the blade shorter and the handle longer? That'll bring the balance further down. Or maybe you want an even lighter, faster sword with more reach and you can live with somewhat compromised cutting power, but at the same time you want a very streamlined hilt with a minimal guard and no pommel. Well, that's a way to do it. Longer handle that can counterbalance all that. At the same time, you also have the option to choke down if you want for even more reach and a more powerful cut. How much was it really done in history? I don't know. 
I imagine at least sometimes it was done. You just do this. Or even as you strike, you allow your hand to slide down to get just a little bit more reach and power. There is a downside to having such a long handle because it becomes a juicy lever that the opponent can reach for and use against you. But you know, you lose some, win some. What you win in this case is the ability to grapple with it as well. You might be able to hook this behind your opponent's wrist and push that while cutting at the same time. You might be able to strike better. And yes, you can use the other hand if you don't mind sacrificing reach. What I mean is, if I use it in one hand and I get just close enough to just barely touch the lens, and now with the same stance I'm using both hands, I'm shortening it. I can't reach quite that far. But if you're already up close and personal, there might be opportunities to use the other hand, although chances are you probably need it for grappling in that situation. And of course, more handle means more to mort how with. Usually only relevant in armored combat. And finally, there's a beneficial side effect. If you have a particularly long handle, there's a bit of passive protection. Now, you wouldn't want to do this deliberately, you know, try to parry with this because it's awfully close to the hand, way too risky. But I have had it happen in sparring and seen it that a blade would actually land on the handle of a messer where normally it would have gone past and cut the arm. So you may think the way to turn this two-handed messer into a single-handed one would be to shorten both the blade and the handle. You could just shorten the blade and leave the handle more or less as it is. I would shorten it a little bit, but not to what you would expect from, say, an arming sword. As a side note, I interpreted the bottom one here as a Kriegsmesser because the blade isn't much shorter than the top, and the cross guard is quite large. But it's significantly lighter, really feels more like a single-handed sword, and it can easily be used with one hand. So sometimes it can be quite difficult to distinguish. And frankly, the distinction in case of a messer is somewhat arbitrary to begin with. There are plenty of other examples in history as well. Chinese swords do that pretty often, be it in case of a Dao or a Jen, the handles tend to be pretty long for what we'd expect from a single-handed sword. There's also the Burmese Da with an exceptionally long handle that, as far as I know, was used single-handedly as well, correct me if I'm wrong. And even when we look at a Japanese wakizashi, the handle is often longer than a single hand requires. Keep in mind it's not a this is how swords are made kind of issue set in stone. There are just different goals that you might have in designing something. Whether you want to emphasize speed by making it overall lighter or bringing the balance back or bringing it further forward, there are so many different ways to make a sword with different specifications, different applications. You know, like I've said in another video, it's like having a certain pool of points that you can allocate. Depending on how you'd like to distribute the points, you might make the handle either longer or shorter or pick a differently sized pommel or no pommel at all. All of that, I hope that makes sense. So there are good reasons to make a single-handed sword with a longer handle. Before you run off, I want to give a shout out to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate the generous support. It helps a lot, especially these days when YouTube ad revenue is more inconsistent and unreliable than ever. You're awesome, you really make a difference, and I hope you enjoy the extra content that I put up. I wish I could read out every individual name, but that would take about 10 minutes and thereby double the length of this video. Anyway, I hope you like this. Let me know what you think and take care, folks.